While most of us were learning our ABCs in nursery school, Steve Mann was trying to reinvent the vacuum cleaner. Is he a bona fide genius or another mad scientist? Whatever your opinion, Armina Ree shows us he may be about to change our world. I call this the EVG. If you look into my eye, it looks like I have a glass eye because the, the, the sensor is imaged there. So this thing captures my heart rate, respiration, e full ECG waveform brain waves. So we have the EEG and the EVG. You have a visual memory prosthetic, electrically, computationally, rather than just by refractive optics. If I, if I may just uh, take a little moment here to explain that. This is a personal safety device. So this is a necklace that, that has a fisheye lens on it. Looks like a hip hop artist. Recently, Microsoft has started to express interest. They make something called SenseCam that's kind of modeled after this. Having trouble following along? You're not alone, because Steve Mann has an IQ that is off the charts. This is a genius at work. While most four-year-olds were learning their ABCs, Steve was busy creating his very first invention. I guess when I was uh, around the time I was in kindergarten, I invented a new kind of lock that had a radially symmetric key so that it could be inserted in any direction so you wouldn't have to know which way was up when you stuck the key in the lock. When you were in kindergarten? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I think it was like before I started kindergarten. You might remember Steve from our story last year. Ultimately, I'm hoping that this technology will be able to help people see better and have some real, real use to it as well. He's the world's first cyborg, creator of the ITAP. But that's just one of hundreds of inventions the Canadian scientist has masterminded in his 47 years. You see, hearing aids have been all computerized now, right? And seeing aids like eyeglasses ought to be. So I filed a number of patents. I filed a patent on a contact lens embodiment of this invention, putting all the miniaturizing the computers into a contact lens. The University of Toronto engineering professor has more than a hundred patent applications for his inventions, which include a mass casualty decontamination shower. This is part of a, a, a proposal that was presented on Capitol Hill in Washington and started out as a fun little art project back in 2000, <laughs> but after 2001. Uh, it, it, it became kind of, uh, there became a lot of interest in this invention. I've got to say, only you would think of this as a fun little art project. Steve may live upstairs, but that doesn't stop students and fellow inventors from dropping by at all hours of the day. It's an open-door policy at Mann's studio, which is smack in the heart of downtown Toronto, across the street from the Art Gallery of Ontario. And what would you say to the person, I'm sure you've been called a mad scientist in the past? It, it's always hard to say because, because it's so easy for people to dismiss stuff in a negative light. His genius is hard to keep a finger on. Are you okay down there? <laughs> Should we go down there? What is that place? What's that? So this is, this is a pneumatophone. It's a musical instrument that runs on air. This time we track him down in the basement, jamming on another invention, a woodwind instrument made of plastic pipes. When do you have time to come up with these things? I've got to ask. Um, I, I come up with a new invention every day pretty well. As you go to the B, you're up into this section C. But this is the invention that could finally make him rich, the hydrolophone, the first instrument in history that can make music underwater. I had a dream that I was playing in a fountain and that the fountain was a pipe organ. And I talked to a lot of physicists and engineers and everything about the idea of an underwater instrument. And they all said that it was impossible. One day he noticed toilets sing at the end of a flush. And we don't mean jiggling the handle. Those tones grow louder as the toilets age. That provided motivation for Steve to go after his dream. The tadpole-shaped Nessie has been 20 years in the making. Depending on how you manipulate your finger across the water jet, it changes the sound quite a bit. It kind of just splashes the whole time, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, maybe if you're wearing a bathing suit, it's fine. Yeah. The instrument, that sounds like a pipe organ, draws the attention of curious onlookers day and night. Kids, adults and families are being drawn to the hydrolophone like a magnet as they pop up in water parks across the country. Sounds like a lot of work. Are you guys making money yet? Uh, we're getting pretty close to breaking even right now. There's a lot of R&D that goes into this. And they're not mass produced overseas either. Each hydrolophone is individually handcrafted in-house. 
Royal Conservatory flautist Jamie Thompson believes it has the potential to fill the role of keyboard in any chamber music. You could actually picture it on stage at like Roy Thompson Hall or Carnegie Hall. Sure, why not? Yeah, it, well, you know, this the flute itself we take for granted, but a hundred years ago, it was a newfangled contraption. Ryan Jansen is the world's first hydrolophone composer. It's very liberating to be able to play music and write music on this kind of instrument just because you can do so much. There's a windmill and there's something I call a blue roof up there, which is a, a water system that irrigates the roof to keep the solar cells cool with rainwater. Man calls it an urban beach. This is a mouthful. The world's first flexible roof membrane, photovoltaic material, which basically means it combines water play with renewable energy. And the idea is to replace the sense of, of sand with silicon and it's a, a solar a solar surface that's also a beach-like space. The professor's failures far more impressive than most people's accomplishments. So I invented a vacuum cleaner that had a blowing nozzle in the center of it, radially symmetric, with a, with a vacuum around the outside of it to dislodge the dirt first and then draw it away. But I wasn't able to bring it to market. Um, well, so how old were you? Um, I don't know, maybe about four or five. You weren't able to bring it to market. You're a four or five. Most kids can't even read. <laughs> call him eccentric. Call him a mad scientist. But one thing's for sure. Steve Mann has left an indelible mark on this planet. And there's no foreseeable end in sight. Are you doing it to become a millionaire billionaire one day? Or are you doing it to change people's lives, to make it better, to make the world a better place? Why do it? And what do you see for the future? Um, probably what really matters is is what you leave behind and whether see what what I really want to do is is make people's lives better and and bring in a sense of fun and frolic and inventiveness and creativity and and sort of change the way people think